up, everybody? Good morning. Great to have you back here at Worst Teen Training at University, WorstTeenTraining.com. How are you? I'm Brandon Dempsey, your host, and it is great to see you on this fantastic, fantastic Tuesday. Terrific Tuesday, and not too much longer from now, it will be your rehearsal. So, how do you feel about that? We got some great things coming up. We have our special guest right here, uh, Daniel Munden. Say hello. He's saying, hey, what's up, Matt? How are you? We're going to hear from Daniel in just a little bit. So if you wouldn't mind, just kind of stand by for a, a moment. Matt Lockwood is on Periscope. What's up, Matt? Matt is going to be joining us for a show. He's going to be sitting in this hot seat. Uh, hot screen, rather. Yeah. He's going to be sitting in the hot screen. And uh, we're going to hear from him. So that's going to be good stuff. Um, let's see. What's up? If you guys would, please go ahead. Yeah, Matt, we're looking forward to it also, bro. Great to see you, man. And uh, we got Mark James coming. Did I tell you, Matt? Mark James is going to be on the show later on. And Daniel is on Periscope. But Daniel's right here. How is that? He's just playing with me. He's doing that intentionally. He is a good guy, Matt. If you would, please go ahead right now, everyone. Jerry, what's going on? How are you? Great friends coming in on Periscope and Facebook Live. Please, if you would, do us the honor and share this out with all of your friends. That's right. All your followers. Uh, Twitter, Periscope, Facebook Live. If you would, if this is the first time to the broadcast and you're watching us, we say a welcome, big welcome, and thank you so much for coming. If you are watching us by Periscope, Facebook Live, of course, our very own Worship Team Training University, and also YouTube and listening to the playback on iTunes and Spreaker. Big all shout outs to everybody out there. Thanks so much for coming. It's great to have you. Man, we are talking about how can we jailbreak your practice. Free your worship team from the practice prison. Three ways to do that. We're going to get to that in just a second. So, all right. Tell me what's going on with you. If you guys would share it out. I got some stuff I want to share out with you. Our brand new book is coming. Can you believe it? It's almost here. The brand, brand new, new, new book. It is called The Journey of a Worshipper. And we just got through. Big shout out to Michael, who is doing all of our editing. And I just got through writing that this past, I think, January, we finished it. And that's going to be going off to Faith Life and to Amazon and um, our own site, Worship Team Training University. And if you're signed up with Worship Team Training University, you will also get it for free. So you get a free book. So can't wait for that. Plus, we have 12 more books that are practically done. And we're going to be releasing those in a set series. I mean, man, if you are a member of Worship Team Training University, you have a lot to look forward to. And what? What's that? You're not? Oh, you mean you're not yet a member? Well, you need to change that because if you do, you will get all of this awesome content that we'll be sharing out. And you can also do this while you're at it. Go ahead and sign up for our Monday Morning Digest. We're now putting out two newsletters. One, if you're signed up with us as Worship Team Training. And then also, two, if you're signed up with us at Worship Team Training University. You'll get all new articles, all new content, what's coming your way for this week, and then that's on the Worship Team Training University site. And then if you're watching us by um, uh, regular Facebook Live and um, you're going to Worship Team Training site, you haven't signed up yet, you still get a newsletter of what we did from the last week and you can still have access to some of our free stuff and also links to the new Worship Team Training University. So please sign up today for the Monday Morning Digest and today, today's training post, and let me just put this out there as well for some of you great folks. If you want to be a member of Worship Team Training University, you're going to go to this link. I just shot this off uh, both by Twitter and also uh, through Facebook. So if you're watching us right now, you can click on those links. They're there. If you're listening by the audio playback, uh, you can go back to our Facebook page which is Worship Team Training, or Twitter, at Worship TT, and you will get all the good stuff there. Plus, uh, there's many more, many more things. Awesome. Okay, my wife is commenting on something on Facebook, and it's kind of terrifying. Every time I see that, because I don't know she's posting a silly picture of me, which, who cares? Anyway, we're all silly. Hey, great to have you here. Let's get right to it, shall we? I've taken enough of your precious sweet time, and I don't want to do any more because we got more stuff coming your way. Today's post, you can grab it by uh, becoming a member at Worship Teen Training University. It's called Jailbreak, Jailbreaking Your Practice. 
Say that fast five times, all right? And if you can, then great. I'll give you a free membership. How about that? Maybe. I got to check on that. Producer, can we do that? Okay. He shook his head no. He's still shaking his head. Anyway, uh, let's jump right to it. So today, 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 we have our good friend, Daniel Munden. Daniel's on with us. Hello, Daniel. What's up? It'd be a lot better if he is speaking. So let's try that again. Maybe, um, are you muted? Or have I muted you somehow? Ah, I did mute him. And that was intentional because that goes back to last show when we talked about Kent Morris and our audio team. You can't be an effective uh, tech team member if you keep muting your people on stage except for if it's bad behavior, right? <laughs> right? What's up, Daniel? How you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Uh, Daniel is a worship leader out from what city and church? Uh, Brighton, Michigan. Okay. And our uh, church is Community Bible Church. Community Bible Church, in yeah. which everybody belongs. Okay. So uh, <laughs> Daniel yeah, has true. also been, uh, Daniel's also been a mentoring student. He's actually a mentoring student through our mentoring program. And by the way, you can check all that stuff out at worshipteentraining.com slash mentoring and also slash workshops. And what do we do? Uh, Sharice is from Michigan. And Sharice was on, hey, Periscope. She's on Periscope. Sharice was cool. our guest last week, if you want. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was on last week. So Sharice, what's up? Um, so uh, you can check all the good stuff out at worshipteentraining.com. And uh, we were also um, in uh, North Carolina doing a workshop this past weekend. So if you followed us on Snapchat, at worshiptt, then you can see all that good stuff there. We're going to run the playbacks pretty soon on the university site, so you want to be sure to sign up for that as well. So um, Daniel's been through our program, and actually I had the, the pleasure of mentoring him and still mentoring him. He's still in our program. He went through two semesters, and now he's in his third semester, in which we do a long, extended kind of check-in thing. So it's been really cool, and I want to have uh, Daniel would like to share a little bit about his experience later on, but we are we are interested today in hearing his experience about what it means to work with his team at rehearsal and also with uh, encouraging about practice time. So let's ask the tough question first. Does Daniel, does your team practice? You know what? Uh, most of them do really well. Um, they, I have some that practice. Um, even without their instruments, they run through the music, chart it all out, and bring it and just play it, you know? So I feel like I'm definitely um, blessed with a lot of musicians that um, like will text me during the week and say, hey, qu ask questions about the parts. Um, for the most part, yeah. Once in a while, you know, they, they'll show up and go, you know, to be honest, I didn't, I haven't had time to practice or whatever, but I will have it by Sunday. Um, and so we'll kind of still work through it at rehearsal, but, um, for the most part, yeah, I have, I'm, I'm blessed with a good group of, uh, musicians that, that really take, uh, just take ownership in, in practicing and, and knowing the songs. Do you realize that almost every worship leader right now hearing or watching this, their jaws are probably swinging in the breeze right now? Yeah. You know? I mean, that's like, that's a rarity. So, uh, yeah. tell us, everybody wants to know this already. How do you do that? What did, what, you've been there now at your church for how long? Four years. Four years, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And he's tamed yeah. the beast within four years. So tell us, no. about, tell us about that. How did you do that? You know, it, I can't take all the responsibility. Um, yes, they've can. had a, they've had a good culture of that kind of a team culture that has, um, been really encouraging to one another to actually work on on the music and know it and they they made it fun too where you know they joke about before i got here if somebody didn't know their parts they'd throw a, a practice cd at them and, <laughs> and say make sure you know you know so they throw things at each other uh, um i mean we do have i have some younger vocalists that um definitely show up and say oh yeah, yeah i got this i got this but um once we actually start running through the songs, it's like, mm, nah, you don't. <laughs> so uh, that that just uh, takes a little bit of work, just getting them. It, it's helpful with the musicians that do know it because they definitely are learning from them, uh, mm. and it makes them. It, it actually makes practices awkward for the person that um, 
doesn't work. And so they know that everyone's, uh, you know, counting on them to know their parts or else they kind of, <laughs> they get, a they get kind of worked over a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Uh, can you tell us about your band? Like, uh, who do you have in the setup and what does that look like? Yeah. So, um, we have usually, you know, dr usually drums, bass, um, keyboard player, um, one or two electric guitars, and then I play acoustic guitar and have one or two um, vocalists with me. Um, we we rotate vocalists through. We have about I don't know uh, five or six ladies and a and a couple guys that um, that I'll rotate through. Uh, we have some of the musicians are pretty consistent, and I, that has definitely made a a big. Um, impact on just the quality of the music because they're used to playing with one another and um and they're just really talented um and then we kind of feel we kind of filter through a few others that are um available part-time and stuff like that but um for the most part we have some great musicians that um yeah just take take good ownership and actually playing well evaluating how how we did they'll take the cds home of um, our Sunday service and listen, listen to them to kind of evaluate how it sounded, how we did. Um, so yeah, I, I, hopefully people aren't hating me right now for. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're probably wanting to learn your secret sauce. That's all, you know, uh, which is yeah. quite is quite uncommon. But I mean, that's a good for you. I mean, to have a team like that who's interested in what they do and what you're doing, it says a lot about your leadership as well. And the fact that they practice on their own, uh, that's a, like I said, that's a rarity to have that. So what was that like for you when you first came into the church and now you're, you're hit with uh, wow, this team really practices versus where maybe you came from before. Yeah, it definitely was um, different. I was, uh, it just made things kind of easier. We didn't have to, um, take time to work through stuff as much. I mean, we still stop and talk about certain parts of songs and, um, you know, sometimes the songs that we haven't done for a while or new songs, we, you know, it takes us quite a few times to run through them to get our parts and all get together on, on that song. But um, it definitely was a change. Um, especially, like, when I first started part-time, I was leading a youth youth band and that basically was, you know, almost starting from scratch on a song. We'd have to listen to it a few times um, before we'd actually play through it. But here it's like everybody's usually um, familiar, pretty familiar with the song and how it goes. And, um, and so it makes it a lot shorter of a practice time when we all get together on a Thursday night and actually try to run the songs. Sometimes we don't really talk about it much. We're just kind of like, okay, um, any questions before we start? <laughs> yeah, can you please so, can you please remove the CD that was embedded in my head from your throw? That would be my yeah, idea. right. That would be right. so. Yeah. What, so how do you so how do you work with those musicians when they the, the one two that don't know their music and besides throwing things at them as you were so <laughs> you know at liberty to share with us? Thank you. Uh, yeah. What do you what do you say to those that don't come prepared? How do you work with that? Um, I encourage them to, um, to listen and pay attention to their parts and, um, make sure that they are, are ready to go on Sunday. Um, the guy that led before me, the guy that was the worship leader before me, he's still here. He was just part time. He's been part of the church for, you know, for years now. Um, but he and I always encourage people to, you know, if, if learning their parts, they need to listen to that song until they're pretty much almost sick and tired of it to actually know how the song goes, um, what, what different parts there are and, um, just make sure that they have their part down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, I think I, I attribute it to some of the, some of the, um, team members as well, just in their, um, just how they can kind of be playful with people if they, um, if they don't know their parts, it's kind of the culture of the, the band. It's like, okay, well, you know, we know that they're going to get kind of messed with if, <laughs> if they screw up and don't know their part or whatever. But some of the younger team, it's great because the, some of the older team members are very encouraging. They, uh, 
they encourage them to learn them, but also not be nervous too, because they can pick up on the nervousness um, of somebody younger who's just kind of joined the team. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really good at just trying to encourage the person through that and um, saying, you know what, we got you. Don't worry about it. Like uh, we're right behind you. No matter what, like, you know, if you skip that, you know, bridge or if you, if you don't, we'll be right there with you. Uh -huh. So it's, it's just a good team. It's a good team culture that I, I have really appreciated for sure. So um, let me ask you this question. Um, Mo had a question here on Periscope that just shot up, and um, I wanted to respond to him. Thanks, Mo. And by the way, you guys uh, participate, so let us know. You got questions just like Mo. Type it in, Periscope, Facebook Live. Let us know what's up. Also, if you're listening by playback, you can still type in the comment window. Don't be shy. Come on. Um, know your music, right? Okay, so Mo says he's got people on his team that are 20 years older than him, and they're behind in their music. So when you're, when you're dealing with team members that are a little bit older than you, it can be a little intimidating, number one, right? Because there's yeah. an age factor. And you don't want to tell anybody that they're doing things wrong, right? Um, maybe you do, but on the outside, you don't. Um, but, you know, and they're behind their music. So what, how would you approach that situation? I mean, you, you have many different ages that you work with. How would you approach that situation, Daniel, when... You know, someone's not practicing, but they're also older than you. How do you deal with that? And, you know, I have had a couple of musicians here at Community Bible that um, we were kind of in that situation with. They're, they're no longer here, not, not because I got rid of them, <laughs> <laughs> but um, because they moved on to a different um, church and closer to home and stuff. But um, I've had a couple that um, I just have to try and encourage them. They definitely took a little bit more... Um, attention and practice to kind of talk them through where they needed to, you know, be at, um, talk them through a little bit more of how they needed to be playing. Like, Hey, we're building here. So not just whole notes. You need to start breaking into quarter notes, eighth notes on, on the bass or whatever, so that you, you know, you can help build. Um, so just a little bit of coaching on them connecting with the drummer and, um, yeah, I think that that was um, kind of what I had to deal with, and it's and it definitely helps if they are teachable. If they're not, it's that that definitely makes it um, harder to actually um, being younger, harder to communicate with them. But that's kind of what I've had to deal with. So, um, what's what's the toughest spot for you? The toughest spot for me. Yeah, like when you are working with those that are older than you, or you're you're having to communicate instruction about how to do things within rehearsal. Yeah. What is the toughest spot for you? The toughest spot for me is not having to communicate with uh, people that are um, behind in their music, but the ones that are way better than me in their music. <laughs> because, <laughs> because when I try to communicate to them, they look, you know, they can uh, they can smile and, and be helpful and say, "Oh, you mean." Uh, this instead of uh, <laughs> what you're trying to communicate. Um, usually they're gracious with me. So you're talking, so, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm talking what? No, no, you, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it goes, I guess both, I could say both are more challenging, like um, trying to communicate ways that they need to get better. I'm trying to encourage them, but with with the players that haven't um, that are struggling, we um, even before I got here, they they they've definitely spent you know invested in uh, ways that people can practice. They they linked our planning center to rehearsal mix, and so that's a big help for um, for the musicians. So we've definitely directed people to to that if um, they're struggling knowing how they're supposed to play. Um, as well as just trying to find any other resources that show um, training on showing how the, the part is played by the, the band that we're playing or whoever. So just being able to provide those resources too has made a huge impact on, um, on some of the musicians here. So you recommend technology like Rehearsal Mix. I love that. And then also Planning yeah. Center Online. Absolutely. Right. Because I've had other, other teams that those that even those that I've worked with over the weekend, uh, they're, they're still just handing out CDs, which is still good, 
but you know, it's helpful to have to how, how let me ask you this. How did you introduce that with your team by getting them techno giving them technology and things that they can gravitate to? Yeah, well they've they've been using that before I got here. Um, I started that at my old church and it it was very beneficial. I did have a few older players that were um, amazing on their instruments but didn't even email, you know. So then I would have to burn them a CD and print off the music for them. But um, this team is definitely pretty uh, tech savvy to where they ha they listen to the songs on their phones while they're driving. They they uh, pull up the PDFs to play the the chords. Um, they find sometimes they find uh, videos on their own of of uh, certain lead lines for electric guitar. Hmm. Um, so they definitely are like if I don't provide that, they're expecting it. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, planning center rehearsal makes makes a world of difference. Um, just because of how easy it makes it to uh, to hear your parts and and learn how you need to you know how to play those parts. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Daniel. Tell us. Um, let's see. They can't get with technology and burning CDs is a hard. Uh, my MacBook doesn't even have a drive. Uh, Mo says. Uh, Mo, he said that the program was called Rehearsal Mix. Yeah. And uh, so thanks for that. And also, uh, there's a quick question too. Uh, from Matt Lockwood. Matt asked, uh, how many new songs do you do, uh, let's say, within what, maybe a, a month or so? Within a month, uh, probably one. Um, if I really, really want to um, have a song that I think is going to be great for a sermon or something, then I'll add it in. But usually, it's about typically about one. Because I, I would rather that um, my people have a lot of songs that they know and that they really sing rather than um, introducing songs too, too, too much. Yeah. Um, and that, that really hits me sometimes when we've been doing, um, I think it was at my previous church, I had been doing Forever Rain by Hillsong for like... Forever? A year. A year, yeah, forever. A year or two. And then someone came up and said, oh man, I just love that song that you're doing, Forever Rain. Man, it's like my favorite song right now. Um, you know, that I think they even referred to it as the, that new, new song. song yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> okay. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that just made me think, man, like, people aren't here every week. They're not always listening to the music that I'm listening to. They live in different world worlds where they're, you know, they might be listening to K-Love, but we're not doing all, all of those songs either. Um, where it takes a lot of repetition to actually learn a song. Just like when we encourage the band members to... Um, listen to the song over and over again yeah. so if they know it it's the same thing with people being able to feel comfortable and sing with it uh, you know a lot of pastors are shaking their heads right now because they're probably saying you know if my church would only listen to those sermons because it's the same thing it's the same thing we, we gripe about how they don't listen to the CD or practice or whatever pastors yeah. go through the same emotion uh, that's true yeah, yeah. so okay alright so I want to get into the nitty gritty now alright you guys ready uh, Corey Cooper, thanks so much. He said tips on rehearsals, please. She did. Sorry. Um, okay. So, because uh, I, I there's two things I want to jump into. So, Coral, let me get to your question in just a second on Facebook Live. Uh, I wanted to ask you this, Daniel. I was about to say, um, when we're dealing with personalities, uh, you know, tell us, you know, how did you Let's see, what has been the worst for you? You've worked with many different people, and it, when it comes to rehearsing your peeps, they got different behaviors, different personalities, and all that kind of stuff. What has been the actual worst experience for you and the worship team? <laughs> <laughs> Be candid, please. Uh, the worst is, um, it's, I do have a couple uh, strong personalities in on my team, a couple different vocalists that um, that I've had to, you know, uh, talk with a lot. A lot of communication is needed. Um, and candidly, like it, they're they're the daughters of the guy that led before me, um, and who is now and he he's an active elder of our church too. Great guy. Um, That's double. And they're what? That's double. That's double right there. <laughs> um, 
these ladies are friends with my wife um, and I'm friends with them too, but you know, we've had tough conversations because um, they used to have a lot more say in what happened, what songs we sang, um, how the service went. And so it's been difficult and I can just feel the tension sometimes when um, they question kind of what I've decided to do or uh, how we're doing things, you know? So that's been, that's been pretty difficult. Um, that's something that, you know, thanks to Brandon, I've been able to kind of navigate through a little better. Oh, that's sweet. Um, have better responses to, to them. Um, but at the same time, I, I try to work with them a lot too, just because sometimes they have great creative ideas. And so I don't try to be just a, a jerk who is not open to, um, suggestions. Um, so yeah, trying to navigate that just for myself as well, you know, on, uh, having a positive filter when I hear, uh, suggestions and, um, and, uh, trying to communicate well with them. Yeah. Well, that can be the toughest spot. I mean, especially when you're dealing with, uh, Oh man, I mean all the embed intertwines of relationships and yeah. and the church, I mean that kind of makes it, you know, a little murky. So how do you yeah. how, how do you work through that? Um sometimes it's uh things that I just have to ignore. Um hmm. comments that are made to my wife. Uh, you know, or things that I hear uh through other people and it's kinda like, you know, I just have to let that go and not not hold it against anyone, not be frustrated by that. Um, you know, comments like, Oh, well, if Daniel's not going to do that, I'll just talk to my dad and, um, and we might get it done. And it's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> just let that right out of the bag. Didn't you? Um, yeah, I did. We just came right out. And I did, so. I did, I did ask him too, if he felt comfortable before the show, I asked him, are you, are you okay with, divulging your stories, knowing that you, there is a potential that you can get fired after this. <laughs> and he said, yes. So, yeah, but anyway, um, going back to rehearsal though, I mean, that, that makes yeah. it, that makes it challenging because if you have somebody watching over your shoulder, so to speak, when you're rehearsing, yeah. uh, that can make things tough. So, uh, but yeah. brave you are to, uh, have that, uh, thick skin and soft heart, you know? And so, uh, Daniel has been exhibiting that, and that's something that uh, you have to have in, in a rehearsal setting and working with people. Uh, Mo, it goes back to you with uh, what you had asked. Um, how about switch gears for a second, and let's talk about some hands-on. Coral Cooper, ask some questions. Uh, and in fact, she's, she's like letting out the comments right now as we speak, so let's go through them. Um, about rehearsals, uh, yeah. tips on doing rehearsals. What makes a successful rehearsal for you, Daniel? Mm. Um, be prepared, having, having, um, my backing tracks, uh, ready to go. I actually set up a lot of times I set up this band room in here and have everything ready for everybody. Um, so they come in, sit down and we can get started. Um, yeah, we're, we actually meet in a, a gym right back here. So if, if I'm not setting it up here, I'm setting it up out in the, uh, the gym, like setting up the stage and plugging everything in. So just having everything ready, having some songs uh, printed off for the um, vocalists to, to have, um, that, that makes a huge difference. Otherwise it, you know, takes up the first 20 or 30 minutes. That's what they actually used to do that before I was here. They would all meet at six 30 and for the first half hour, they would set up and get ready for practice. Hmm. Because they didn't have a, the guy before me wasn't full time. He was just uh, part time. So uh, it wasn't like he was here during the week that much. Um, besides that, it does help to play through the songs beforehand. I, I have to be prepared or else um, I definitely feel it during, uh, during rehearsal. Yeah. Um, just to know what I'm, what I'm looking for. If, if a, a band member doesn't play a certain part, um, and it helps me prepare so that I can kind of give some, um, just talk about the song a little bit beforehand. There have been times where I, I show up and I, I'm like, man, what songs are we doing? This week's been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I have them ready, but I haven't played through them. And so um, it's like, well, let's just uh, let's just play and go, and see how it sounds. And usually it's 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Not bad. <laughs> well, that all happens to us, and, you know, you have to take things with a grain of salt. I mean, none of us are perfect, you know. Um, I had um, my... One of my musicians pointed out to me that I missed some notes last week, and it was like, "Well, okay, hey, thanks for thanks for noticing. I'll make sure I correct that next time." Yeah, you know, please. we're we're not perfect. Um, Coral had some uh, thoughts that she wanted to share too. Uh, the worst things for her was number one, uh, constant lateness. This is our friend on Facebook, Coral. Thanks by the way of submitting your comment. Constant lateness. Number two, unprepared spiritually. Number three, not prepared well enough. Thank you musically. Number four, performance versus worshiping. That's a big one. Number five, song preference. I, I don't like that song. I mean, what's, what's up with that? Uh, last one, number six, the best singers dragging their feet, etc. They drag their feet and there's etc. after that. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm with you. I'm with the coral that she hits yeah. on the head. So, what? let me just ask you the, the, the big question I wanted to ask you today, Daniel. Out of everything that you talked about today, what is the one thing that makes rehearsals suck? Oh, that makes them suck. Yeah. What was the list of things that she, she listed nope. out there? No, I'm not going back there. No. Are you gone? No. <laughs> no. Expired already. Oh, okay. Um, you know, it, it's not the practices on Thursdays, but the Sunday mornings. Um, that That's a struggle, getting everybody actually there on time and... Um, and starting at the time that I've actually said, hey, let's start. Let's start at 8. And uh, everybody's walking in <laughs> at 8, chatting about the uh, the game from yesterday or whatever. Um, so that's definitely one of one of my struggles as well. Hmm. That sucks the most. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, there's I'm... the song preference in there. Right. It's, song preference definitely comes from those uh, strong personalities a little bit. Um, yeah, I think those are kind of a couple of the main things that I struggle with. Yeah, awesome. I love it. Uh, yeah. This is some really good stuff. Uh, one more. Uh, Coral, again, says tips on building the team, both worship leaders and the musicians. Um, what do you do, Daniel, to help build your team? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's all about relationships. Um, anyway, like, yeah. and I, I definitely know that I need to meet with them more. Um, like, like I see how, you know, at Bethel church, they, they have like worship nights with, or a worship team night where they get together and chat like every month or whatever. And I, I don't do that, but, um, I have dinners once in a while where I provide food and just thank everybody. I need to, mm -hmm. I need to do it again. That's a good I've done one. It in a while. Yeah. Um, even, even just, uh, some of the guys on the team, I'll get together, eat lunch with them once in a while, try and meet with them. Um, the, the girls, you know, my wife's friends with, with them, so sometimes she'll invite them over or um, we'll invite them over together. There's a single singer, single girl that's like um, 26 on our team. We've had her over for lunch. Um, I, think she's getting, I think she's coming over to watch the last Harry Potter movie sometime. Cause she... Uh, she didn't watch the last one. She like watched all the rest of them. Didn't watch the last one. My wife, right. my wife can't believe it. Yeah, no um, kidding. Uh, even even our services, man. Like we try to encourage everybody to at least sit in on one service, but then the other service, we're like hanging out in here, um, just chatting about life, and um, so just even those times, I, I love. Like it's hard for me to to leave the room because people are just chatting about work and uh, life and family and kids and stuff so hmm. that's that's actually my favorite time on Sunday <laughs> that's awesome. well that's yeah. the kind of, that's the kind of relational time uh, yeah. that that we all want to have and uh, so yeah so even when you feel like giving up um, don't because that's just yeah. a passing feeling and uh, you want to remember that God has put you in the position to lead your team just like Daniel and no matter what uh, God is one that's in charge, not man, and, and not even yourself. So, um, Daniel, can you also, like, um, I mean, you kind of moving on, and uh, you've been a student now through our mentoring program. Um, what have you learned through this time, and um, what's been on your heart about that? Um, I've definitely grown. Um, I've been encouraged a lot just in my leadership 
abilities. Um, definitely just uh, <clears throat> stepping out and, and, uh, and working towards, you know, leading people more. Um, work, working with those strong personalities, like I said before, and how to have um, healthy responses um, when, when dealing with them so that I don't um, email back sharp, <laughs> sharp emails. But even even going through music and learning learning more about music and being encouraged by by you, Brandon, just on um, hmm. my musicality, learning learning my music better, learning music theory, um, so that I can be more flexible with uh, the songs that we're playing, and um, and I can kind of be the person who's you know got some of the answers when we have a, a music question or whatever. Um, but just even. Personally, for me, it was um, this was like the best time about when we started. Uh, what was it? Just a little bit over a year ago. Yeah. Um, just for 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 me to have a connection with Brandon to have, get advice, um, working through a tough situation here at my church with most of the pastors leaving and um, me dealing with mainly the elders at that point. Um, it was very. Um, difficult for me at certain situations, just my outlook, I guess. And so, um, Brandon, Brandon definitely helped me, um, change my perspective, um, but also work through a lot of the, um, the junk that I was kind of going through and, um, and, uh, you kind of come out, <laughs> come out a lot better and healthier, um, in the end and just get a lot of encouragement to be healthy through, through this, um, um, even even down to the most practical things of like making sure I'm exercising, make sh- making sure I'm getting enough sleep, making sure I'm still spending time with family, saying saying no to some of the things at the church so that I can, um, you know, uh, be attentive to my first my first responsibility, which is my family and my boys. So um, I think just encouragement in life to be living a healthy life, but also a life that honors the Lord. Um, that's all. I mean, I've been encouraged in all of that um, going through this course. Mm, awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Daniel. Uh, guys, it, it, it's uh, fantastic to have you on, and uh, thanks for sharing your heart and your ministry with us today, Daniel. Great to have you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Awesome. And we're going to have, and thanks for the kind words, too. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, we meet later on this Thursday, actually, for our time together. And, um, you know, we treat this very seriously in what we do here at Worship Team Training, um, provided if it's our university, if it's our mentoring program, our workshops like we just did in North Carolina, uh, whatever it is, books, whatever. Uh, the whole point is to help get you outfitted with a new uh, tool belt, if you will, to refuel your energy, your ministry, because if it's putting set lists together, if it's working with people that uh, seem to be difficult to work with, if it seems that maybe it's you feel like giving up kind of thing, uh, whatever the case, you know, God has uh, equipped you to be that leader already that he's called you to be. It's not a, how do I get there, uh, like I need to be this person now. It's it's more of the, well, you already are that leader that God's gifted. There's just a lot of things within you that probably just need to be tapped out and to have somebody help guide you in that process. So this is what we do here at Washington Training. Whether it's leadership, musical, if it's spiritual, uh, this is what we do here. So uh, I invite you to check out what we have to offer, namely our mentoring program that we just mentioned, worshipteentraining.com slash mentoring. And if you want to get deeper knowledge and deeper uh, mentoring, you can also go to our brand new Worship Teen Training University. And that is wttu.co. Would uh, a beautiful person please type that in on Periscope right now? WTTU.co, which Daniel is also a member of, and Sharice as well. Uh, and if you do that, you can uh, if you email me, I'll give you a special. Okay, how about that? So let's let's do that. Um, but the whole idea is that we get help from one another because we are in the long haul, and ministry is too short. Uh, life is too short. Life is shorter. So you want to make the most of it. So uh, guys. Love y'all so much. Uh, continue to uh, check into what we are doing here for you at Worship Team Training. 
and Worship Team Training University. Uh, Treasure, great to see you. Mike, great to know you guys. I'm glad that you are here, Mike, today. Thanks, man. And um, Coral, thank you. And uh, all of our folks today, Cherise joining in, also commenting. Matt, thanks so much. You guys are fantastic. Hey, coming up this Thursday, we have Tommy Walker. Tommy Walker is going to be on the program this Thursday, but in order to watch it, you got to sign up at WTTU.co. And if you act now, you can still get a good rate. It's only going to cost you, I think, like five bucks a month. I mean, anybody can afford that. That's a cup. That's a latte a month. Cherise, thanks for that. You can watch Tommy Walker. Also, next week, we got John Chisholm, Worship Songwriting Webinar Part 2, or Part 2. But that's going to be a lot of fun. You can't miss it. And we also have Rich Kirkpatrick coming up. We have a lot of great people, Rick, Mucha uh, Rick Muchow, uh, Zora the Drummer. We have a lot of great guests coming that are already lined up. Chris Denning from Planning Center Online. A lot of great people. You can't miss it. So anyway, be sure to go to WTTU.co. Sign up today, and I can give you a special rate if you email me. That's Brandon at worshipteamtraining.com. Please do that. And we're going to have uh, some more things coming up. So, guys, thanks so much for joining us. Again, Matt uh, is going to be with us next week also. Daniel, thank you for being with us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. And love you guys so much. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you back this coming Thursday if you join us at WTTU.co. See you guys very soon. Love you, and may God's blessings flow to you and your worship team. Take care. Bye-bye.